Would you like to know what I look for in a cloud architect interview when I'm interviewing a cloud architect? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with approximately 25 years architecture experience, and I spent about two decades helping people just like you get your first cloud architect job or enterprise architect job or move up in your career. And I really want to talk about interviewing people. Now, I've interviewed about 6,000 technology professionals over the last 25 years, and I've interviewed at least 5,000 architects, network architects, cloud architects, and other architects. So we're gonna talk about what I look for in an architecture interview. What do I need to see in that cloud architect or enterprise architect or security architect to be able to say, yes, you're hired. And there's a couple of things I look for first in the individual, and then there's the set of technical competency, which I look for last. And I'll tell you why that's last. The first thing I'm looking for is, can this person do the job? And because the architect's job, the cloud architect, the enterprise architect job is about three quarters business, I can't hire the person no matter how good their technical skills are if they don't have the business skills. So I qualify the business skills first. And then after the business skills, that's when we get into the deep technical competency finding of the architect. And I'll talk about how I do that as well. So the first question I ask when I see a cloud architect or solutions architect or enterprise architect walk in the door for an interview is, can I put this person in front of the client's CEO, CFO, or CIO? And will that person be seen as an advisor? See, when I hire an architect, they're going to have to understand the business needs. They're going to have to understand the resource requirements, especially financially constraints. They're going to have to understand the chief information officer. And this person is going to have to be seen as an advisor to the CIO and the CEO and the CFO. Because if you're going to close a billion dollar deal, you have to convince the chief financial officer that it's in the best interest of the company. So the first question is, can I put that person in front of the uh, client? Now that means the person needs to have great executive presence or the ability to walk in and command the room. They have to be CXO relevant and need to know what they can or cannot communicate to the uh, C-suite. So that's the first thing that I look for because they won't, architect won't be effective in their job without it. Now, the next thing I look for in any cloud architect or any enterprise architect or any architect for that matter is, can the person lead an architecture team? So of all the careers I've had in my life, architecture is a team sport. I've never been on any enterprise architecture or cloud architecture where it didn't take a team of 15 to 50 people to be able to understand the client's needs, uh, the way the client's business operates, the client's business challenges, or anything or the business goals, or anything necessary to even solve the business's problem. So I need a team of 15 to 50 people. So can the person lead a team? And if the person cannot lead the team, unfortunately, I can't hire them as a cloud architect because they won't be able to do the job. Now, I might like that person so much that I put them in an engineering role, but I can't hire that person to be an architect if they can't lead the team. So these are the things I'm looking for before I even assess competency, technical competency. Now, the next thing I typically look for is does the person have excellent communication skills? because that person will have to be able to get the correct information from the client and the correct information from the key stakeholders and the correct information from key vendors and the correct information from other various technology teams as well. So if the person doesn't have good communication skills, they're gonna make errors or miss things or miscommunicate things and that's gonna cause a series of problems. Now, if for any architecture to work, and architecture involves people, processes, and technology, we're, it, we're gonna need to affect a lot of systems. And in order to be able to do that, we are going to ultimately have to go work with a lot of people for long periods of time. And if there's a miscommunication, we're gonna have conflicts, and conflicts are gonna cause uh, relationship challenges, lack of productivity. So I need a person that knows how to communicate well and not do that. So the person is gonna need really good communication skills to be able to lead an architecture team, determine who needs to do what, and be explicit so the right things get done, those types of things. So that's another one of the key things I'm looking for. Now, 
I really have to check the or the clients or the potential candidates' business knowledge. I can't hire a cloud architect or an enterprise architect that doesn't understand business. And the key here is to remember that whether it's a cloud architect, enterprise architect, or any architect, we're hiring the architect to solve a business problem. Maybe a hospital wants to get the patients through their hospital system quicker so they don't get as many hospital-acquired infections. Now, that means a change to the business. So that architect needs to understand the way that hospital operates, the what it takes to get people in and out, the understanding of the various technology systems inside of that process, hospital and the relationships to it, the process to put people in the hospital, to transfer the patient from unit to unit, all of that needs to understand, along with being able to understand an organization's capital structure and balance need, balance sheets and then potentially the best way for them to invest in technology, lease it, finance it, or, or outsource it in the cloud. So the person really needs to understand business and business challenges and business operations because you can't solve problems about with business if you don't understand business. So I hope that sort of makes sense. Now, where I really start looking here, and then we're going to get soon into the what I'm looking for from a technical competency person, is I'm looking to see if the person's motivated. I want to see if the person's competitive. I want to see if that person wants to be the best of the best. And why is that? See, if I'm looking to add someone to my architecture team, I don't care if it's a security architecture team or a cloud architecture team or a solution architecture team, whatever the thing is, I want to run an all-star team. I want to run my team great so I can drive great results and my career gets better. So in order to do that, I need the best of the best. And in order to be the best of the best, you have to have the right people that are the best of the best and the best people are motivated and excited about being better. The person that wants to get a little stronger that's in the gym every day is more motivated to the, the workout because they're trying to be the best athlete in the world than the person that's working out three times a, a day or three times a week in the gym because their doctor told them they had to, for example. In many cases, there's a different motivation. So I want that motivated person. So those are the real attributes I look for before technical competency. Now, technical competency is obviously key. I can't hire someone that doesn't understand the underlying technology and the underlying technology's relationships to each other. Now, that's not how to build technology. Uh, building technology will not teach you that. I'm concerned, does the person understand all the technologies and the way they interact? Which means, does the person have the ability to add value with a client that's all running, running a hybrid multi-cloud architecture, which is normal for most organizations, that are all running three clouds, they have 10 networking and security vendors, 20 application vendors, and they're located in 15 different countries. Does the person have the ability to do that? Now that means the person's gonna have to un have some real understanding of technology and the technology's relationships up to, up to each other, and technology's impact on other parts of the technology system. So I'm going to see, for example, the, the, does the person know that in a particular situation, if they make a change on a router in Japan, how is that going to the, affect the company's sales reps that are in Princeton, New Jersey, software developers that are in Bangalore, India, and call center operators that are in the Philippines? And one simple BGP change can easily can, do, can, make, can affect the entire environment. It, does the person understand that input? impact. So that means instead of learning how to code or how to configure, I'm looking for the person if they understand uh, underlying technology. Now, what is that underlying technology? Networking technology, physical or virtual, it doesn't matter. Compute, either physical or in, or in the data center or the cloud. Storage and storage area networks and various types of network attached storage and file storage, etc. Load balancing, applications, artificial intelligence, security, identity and access management, voice, and even video systems. You may want to call that unified communication. So I need to know that the architect knows all of that and the impact of one element on the system on another element of the system. So here's how I assess that. A person can say, I built this, and that means I understand the impact of design because it just means they know how to build stuff. So I asked these simple questions, and these are the people that either prove themselves to be architects that I hire real fast before someone else gets them, or they, these are the people that prove that they don't know architecture. They may know engineering or something else, but they don't know architecture. So here's what I typically do. I give someone a scenario, 
And the scenario will be a various business that's got some various business challenges and some various technology challenges. And when I give them that scenario, I'm going to ask them, based upon this scenario, what are the real business problems you're trying to solve? Uh, what are your architectural options to solve these problems? What are your architectural trade-offs in the opportunities you have to solve these problems? What types of systems will you need uh, that'll be part of the architecture to solve these problems? And what are the trade-offs of their different system type options? What are the architectural challenges? What are the architecture gotchas? And what are the things to look for? I'll ask the person, now given all these challenges, what do we need to do from a security perspective? What are your security concerns? And, uh, I'll even, and, and I'll even ask them, what will be necessary to take this first meeting with a client to a complete architectural solution? Meaning all of the stakeholder management things they need to do, all the creation of governance structures, statements of work, training materials, uh, maturity assessments to see if the people are even ready. And when I ask that person and I give him an architectural scenario and I ask him to design something, explain it and present it, guess what I asked him to do? The exact architect job. So that's how I checked architect competency because I don't care what someone built. What someone built doesn't enable me to know what they can design and what business problems they have. It just shows me what they were able to build. So this uh, gives me a lot of information. This is what I do on cloud architect interviews, enterprise architect interviews, security architect interviews. And I've also trained thousands of architects over the years. And you can find architects that I've trained working at companies like Amazon and Google and Microsoft and Accenture and Deloitte and KPMG and Capgemini, Barclays Bank, JP Morgan Chase Bank, Zscaler, for example, Netspoke, uh, Palo Alto Network. So I've trained so many people and these are the things that other hiring managers are looking for as well. And when I ask hiring managers, they say they're doing very, fairly similar things. If you'd like to get your first cloud architect job, enterprise architect job, security architect job, AI architect job, or any type of career, join me on a free webinar. I host free webinars for cloud architect, security architect, AI architect, enterprise architect, and other architecture careers as well. And I run one each week. And on this weekly webinar, we talk about what we do in the architecture role. We talk about the exact skills that you actually need to get hired. And of course, I'll spend time live and free on Zoom answering any career questions you have, because I want you to have the best architect career, because I love all my last 25 years experience in enterprise architecture, network architecture, and other architecture careers. So go sign up for that free webinar. It's in the description in this video. Also in the description of this video are free guides on how to win the, cloud, win the cloud architect interview, for example, or the skills you need to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect. So check out some of those free resources. They're also in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect, security architect, or AI architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.